Hello and welcome back to this series on general relativity. In this video, we look at the energy momentum tensor, also known as the stress energy tensor. We have seen that the vanishing of the Ricci tensor seems to be the correct equation for the spacetime metric in vacuum. But we also know that spacetime curvature, or more colloquially, gravity, must be generated by matter and energy. So, in order to have a complete theory of gravity, we need something on the right-hand side containing some measure of mass, energy, and perhaps some other things, such as momentum. Furthermore, this something must be a tensor of rank 2, meaning a tensor with two indices, and it must be a covariant tensor. Otherwise, the two sides would not transform the same way, and therefore they could not be equated. Also, the tensor must be symmetric, just like the Ricci tensor which means that the number of entries will be at most 10. The energy plus the three components of the momentum vector makes only 4. If we are to fill in the other elements with energy and momentum only, we'll need to consider combinations of their products as well. Ok, now we have a rough idea about what kind of tensor we want to construct. First, it must be symmetric. Second, it should contain at least energy and momentum. And third, it must be covariant, and let's not forget that it's a field. To make things as easy as possible, let's construct our tensor in flat spacetime using Cartesian coordinates. Before we continue, let's recall some basic facts about special relativity, namely the relation between energy, momentum, and the unit tangent vector u. The energy and momentum of a moving particle are given by these formulae. The components of the unit tangent vector are by definition dx by d tau, where d tau is related to dt through the gamma factor like this. If we choose to work in units where the speed of light is 1, the energy and momentum can be written as a 4 vector. Recalling this identity, where eta is the flat spacetime metric, we recover the well-known relation between energy and momentum. Since our tensor is a field, we now need to switch from individual particles to densities. Let's begin by imagining a swarm of particles at rest. If we choose an arbitrary volume of space and count the number of particles it encloses, we can define a rest frame number density and a knot. Now let's take a scenario where all the particles are moving along the x-direction with some velocity vx. The swarm of particles would be contracted along the x-axis. Since the number of particles hasn't changed, only the volume did, the number density as observed by a stationary observer will increase by gamma. What would be the energy density of the system? If the particles are stationary, only their mass will contribute. If they are moving along the x-direction, we get one factor of gamma due to the volume contraction and one more due to the increase of the mass. But since gamma is equivalent to u0, we can write the energy density like this. We can also define energy current. This would be the rate at which the energy flows in and out of a region of space. Recall the definition of current. It is the amount of stuff, whatever it is, that flows across some surface per unit time and is given by the density of the stuff multiplied by the velocity of the stuff. So the energy current in the i-th direction is this, which again can be written in terms of the 4 vector u. We must insist that energy and mass can be neither destroyed nor created. If the amount of energy in a given volume, say, decreases, that means it must have leaked out through the surface enclosing that volume. This statement can be expressed by the well-known equation of continuity, where the time and space derivatives act on n naught and u, which are now fields. Since time and space are on the same footing in relativity, we can write this expression as a four-dimensional divergence. 
we can repeat the same analysis for each component of the momentum density. Let us arrange the energy momentum densities and currents in a matrix, like so. In the first row, we have the density of energy and the three components of the momentum density vector. The second row gives the current along the x-direction of the energy density and of the three components of the momentum density. The third and fourth row give the same as row 2, but in the y and z direction. The first column lists the energy density and energy current along the three spatial directions. The other three columns list the momentum density and the momentum currents for the x, y and z components of the momenta along the x, y and z directions. The continuity equation can be written in a matrix form like this. Recall the rules of matrix multiplication. Ok, so we have constructed some kind of a matrix. But does it satisfy the three aforementioned criteria? Well, it does contain energy and momentum, so the second criteria under the check. What about symmetry? If we recall that the matrix elements can be expressed in terms of the tangent unit vector, like this, we see that it is indeed symmetric. What's more, now we see that it is also a tensor because the product ui uj transforms like a tensor. It is, however, a contravariant tensor, and we are looking for a covariant tensor. So the last condition is not met. This, however, is not a big issue, because we can always transform tensors from one kind to another using what's called a contraction, where eta is again the flat spacetime metric. So, the contracted energy momentum tensor is covariant. Let's look at an example of an energy momentum tensor for an ideal gas. In such a gas, the particles interact among themselves as hard spheres. They have no internal states. Let's consider again some small spatial volume. We have constructed the energy momentum tensor assuming that all the particles within this volume were moving in the same direction. This, of course, is a silly assumption. In real systems, the particles will have a range of velocities specified by some distribution. The average of their velocities, called drift velocity, is the velocity that causes the number density to increase by gamma. What will be the elements of the energy momentum tensor for this system? I will write them all down and then we'll go over them turn by turn. So, let's begin with the energy density. As I just mentioned, this term is just a particle density in a stationary reference frame. This term is the kinetic energy averaged over all particles inside the volume. For the energy current, we average over this term. The last two terms follow exactly the same logic. Let's work out these terms for the simple case of a gas at equilibrium. What this means is that the drift velocity at any point in the space occupied by this gas is zero. This will set these gamma factors to 1. Let's also assume that the temperature of the gas is low enough that all the particles move with velocities well below the speed of light. This will set all these gammas to 1. Since the average velocity is zero everywhere, the only terms that survive are these. For an ideal gas, this moment is diagonal. Lastly, we recall from statistical mechanics the definition of pressure. So, the energy momentum tensor for an ideal gas looks like this. In the next video, we will complete the Einstein field equations. We'll see that in order to do so, one more ingredient is needed. But I better go, it sounds like the walkers are coming.